Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Um, my name is Sunita Devono Powell. I'm one of the co facilitators for today. This is the third BAFA listening session, and we're going to be focusing on housing protection. Um, I'm going to invite everyone to share uh, your name, pronouns, and dream vacation in the chat so we just have a sense of who's in the room. It could be a vacation that you're actually going on or some fantasy vacation. Um, and while you're doing that, I just want to cover two small logistical things. Um, for folks who have been at one of the previous BAFA sessions, um, we're going to be running through a similar review process. So feel free to log off and come back in at 20 minutes after. Um, and for folks who need um, closed captioning, if you uh, click on the live transcript um, button at the bottom of the Zoom screen, it's on the right hand side, um, there's an option that shows up um, for showing subtitles. I've been told that BAFA is autocorrected as Buffalo, so um, <clears throat> you'll know what we're talking about if that shows up with closed captioning. We're really happy that you all made time to be here today, and I'm just going to give a quick overview. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to discuss the social equity goals, and we'll talk about the agenda in a minute. Um, and I want to take a second and introduce um, the people that are helping bring this together. So um, the Othering and Belonging Institute, thank you, <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a Center for Scholarship Research, Community Partnerships and Strategy at UC Berkeley. Um, OBI, with support from Groundworks, has been working with a equity working group. Um, some of the members are here today and um, they have helped uh, provide input into these draft goals, objectives, and metrics that you're going to be hearing um, from the rest of the team about. Uh, so I want to take a second and um, have all of the facilitators introduce themselves. Um, and I'll pass it to Marissa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Marissa Raya with Brownworks Consulting, and I will pass to Nicole. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. My name is Nicole Montajo. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a staff researcher at the Othering and Belonging Institute. I'll pass it to Joe. Hi, everyone. I'm Joe Ehrenholtz, uh, he, him pronouns, and I'm a data analyst with the Othering and Belonging Institute. I'll pass it to Eli. Hi, everyone. My name is Eli Moore with the Other and Belonging Institute. I'm a program director there. Good to be with you virtually. And I'll pass it to Mylana. Hi, everyone. I'm Mylana. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a graduate student researcher at the Other and Belonging Institute. I'll pass it to Francesca. Welcome everyone. My name is Francesca. I use she and they pronouns and I'm with the Othering and Belonging Institute. Back to you, Sunita. Thank you, Francesca. Um, so I love these vacations. I love how some of them are really extravagant and specific and a lot of people are just like rest. So feeling both. Keep them coming. Um, and uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, so there's two primary goals for today. Um, the first is to review the equity framework development process, the BAFA business plan process, and talk about opportunities for public engagement. And then the second is to really drill down and discuss the draft goals and the protection objectives and metrics. Um, and our agenda, next slide, is pretty straightforward, welcome right on time. Uh, we're, I'm going to pass it over to Eli to give an overview of BAFA. And then um, Joe and Francesca are going to present the frameworks, the equity framework. And then we're going to have a little bit of time for you all to process individually. And then we'll go into breakout rooms for a deeper discussion 
come back for a closing and then we have an extra half hour if there's certain issues that folks want to um, spend some more time uh, discussing. So with that, I will pass it over to Eli. Thanks, Anita. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to give an overview of BAFA, its roles and powers, um, how it can use funds and the broader process that this listening session is a part of. Um, next slide, please. So BAFA is the Bay Area's first regional housing authority um, created by state legislation and is now in the early phase of developing its plan for what its programs will be, how it will generate revenue, how it will staff and build out its organizational infrastructure. Um, and so this listening session is a part of that planning process. When it was created by the legislation, um, the policy set forth some pretty specific roles and, and powers. So firstly, to raise and deploy funding to produce new affordable housing, preserve existing affordable housing and protect tenants. Secondly, to provide technical assistance to local jurisdictions to complement and fortify their housing efforts, and then to generate regional data and communications that would inform housing policy and programs across the region. And besides those general um, powers, it, um, the legislation also um, set forth some requirements on the type of strategies BAFA could use to generate revenue and how it could spend the funds. So um, on the revenue side, the legislation said that BAFA could um, set up, establish um, general obligation bonds, float them on the ballot, and, and if voters approve them, use geo bonds to generate revenue, um, or parcel taxes, special head taxes, gross receipts taxes. Um, and then um, there's specific numbers about the minimum and maximum percentage of BAFA funds that can go to each of the three P's. So a minimum of 52% of BAFA's revenue needs to go to production programs. A minimum of 15% of the funds need to go to preservation. Minimum 5% towards protection and then up to 5% on administration, up to 10% on local government grants, and then there's 13% that's flexible. Um, lastly, in terms of kind of the broad, you know, guardrails and requirements at BAFA, if um, a general obligation bond uh, moves forward, then 80% of the funds generated would return to the county of origin for use there in, in housing programs in those counties. And that revenue can only be used for bricks and sticks, capital costs, hard cost construction. Um, so those are, those are some of the um, kind of broader parameters of what BAFA can do and, and needs to do, is required to do. Next slide, please. So turning to the process of the business plan development and the social equity framework. So the business plan is the plan that um, will specify what programs BAFA is going to set up, how it's going to staff, what its framework for social equity is, how it will, um, what strategies it will use to generate revenue. And, um, and so the social equity framework is part of that business plan. It's the foundational part. So the, the program design and the revenue strategy design um, come after the social equity framework and are, are developed in parallel, but are, are anchored by the social equity framework. Next slide, please. So, so far what the process has been to develop the social equity framework is that we did a review of regional plans and policies and community proposals, and then interviews with 20 social equity leaders across the region. And then we formed the equity working group. You saw the, the list of members earlier 
and they started meeting in April and have been working on the draft objectives and metrics and goals that, that you're going to see today. And then we're currently in the third of the listening sessions that we've held this week. And, and feel free to keep um, asking questions in the chat or comments. Um, we're not going to pause right now to answer them, but we're tracking them and, and we'll come back to them. So the way that this process feeds into the formal um, approval of the equity framework and business plan is that um, you'll see here the kind of calendar of decision making. The top line are the decision points by the formal um, BAFA decision making bodies. Uh, in September or October, they will receive a draft equity framework and um, provide their input on it. And, um, and then that will go back to the equity working group uh, and then out for public workshops and then ultimately come back to the BAFA decision making bodies at the very end of this calendar year to adopt an equity framework and refine the funding program. Um, and then the business plan will be adopted um, soon after that. So the equity working group has been working. That's the green swath here. And they're going to um, get a summary and, and full documentation of all your input during the listening sessions integrate them into the draft equity framework um, and then also again work on it um, in November when there are public uh, public workshops which is another opportunity for broader input next slide please so what is the equity framework the equity framework has these three components um, Firstly, the high level goals. So the goals are the long term um, universal conditions in terms of housing and social equity in the region that BAFA's work should be striving toward. These are the sort of North Star for transformation of the region's housing system. Um, things that BAFA couldn't achieve alone, but that BAFA should be um, contributing towards. The objectives are more specifically what drives BAFA's activities, what destinations and outcomes BAFA's actions are going to lead to. Um, so they're the kind of um, destination that will be used or the, the criteria that will be used for BAFA to decide what types of programs would best reach those objectives and then to evaluate whether the, the programs are um, living up to the objectives and, and moving the, the region towards the, the higher level goals. And then the metrics are the measurements, the yardsticks um, that we would use to measure progress towards the objectives to see how the programs are going in terms of their implementation and their, their outcomes in the community at various scales. Um, so, that that's the the framework and then next slide you'll see um how it kind of can be visualized with the three p's so bafa will have programs in protection preservation and production and then each of those areas there will be objectives and then metrics measuring progress um and then all together they will be leading towards the social equity goals um, and so that's kind of how the social equity framework will be operationalized um, and with that i'll turn it over to francesca thanks eli um, yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and present on the draft social equity goals and then pass it over to joe who will um, present on the objectives and metrics. I just wanted to note, um, we'll have time for discussion, not only in small groups, but also uh, a chunk of time at the end for questions and comments. So I highly encourage anyone who has um, any initial thoughts or reactions to put them in the chat and we'll record them and save them for later. 
Um, we're also going to drop a Google Doc in the chat that has the objectives and metrics and um, just a different format. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the first drop social equity goal is choice and opportunity, which states that all people, regardless of race or income, have autonomy in deciding how and where they live. Whether that means staying in their existing home or community or moving to a different one and accessing opportunities and resources within their community. These include quality schools and jobs, well-maintained transit and well-maintained transit and other public infrastructure systems, neighborhoods free from violence, and home and community-based services and amenities that support health and well-being. Um, goal number two is stable, affordable housing for all, which states that every resident enjoys a safe, stable, accessible, affordable, and habitable home. Goal number three is security and belonging. Um, we're also considering using the term safety, acceptance, and integration, so would love to hear any thoughts on that. This goal states that every Bay Area resident has a sense of security in and belonging to their local community and the region, which is manifested through social systems and trusting relationships that ensure that they are fully integrated into the community and that their full range of human needs are met and cared for. Number four is neighborhood stabilization and cultural preservation. Families and individuals have the ability to stay in their homes, maintain community connections, and preserve the cultural fabrics of their neighborhoods without being displaced by unaffordable housing costs, policy decisions, or other forces. Number five, community self-determination and participation. People most impacted by the housing affordability crisis have the power to collectively shape the future of their communities. Number six, repair. Public institutions and social systems are transformed in order to acknowledge and, when possible, repair the harms and indignities of historic and contemporary housing policies, practices, and systems that have perpetuated racial and social inequities. This includes the advancement of opportunities for historically marginalized communities to build economic and social wealth, both at the individual and community level. The seventh goal is environmental health and justice. Homes have healthy living conditions and neighborhood environments such that no community is disproportionately exposed to air pollution, climate change effects, or other hazards. Persons and communities have viable opportunities to make choices that reduce climate impacts and the design location and construction of homes reduces climate impacts. And our last draft social equity goal touches on prevention. This goal states that the Bay Area's housing ecosystem has built in structural safeguards that respond to moments of crisis to prevent people from experiencing housing precarity thereby ending, ending homelessness throughout the region. And with that, I'll pass it to Joe. Thanks, Francesca. Um, that brings us to our draft protection objectives and metrics. And to reiterate what Eli mentioned earlier, the objectives represent the specific ways that BAFA could operationalize the equity goals. And the metrics are the methods by which BAFA can measure the progress of each objective. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so objective 3.1 is to strengthen existing and support the creation of new policies designed to protect tenants from displacement and unaffordable rents. So metrics for this objective would include funds allocated to expanding tenant protections, um, the number of new renter protection policies adopted by jurisdictions receiving support from BAFA, um, and this would include rent stabilization, just cause eviction, and right to legal counsel policies. Um, also, the number and percent of low income renters protected by new policies uh, by affordability and income level, race, ethnicity, and ancestry, disability status, length of time living in the city, um, aged tenants with children, and 
uh, whether or not tenants live in displacement risk areas. Um, and displacement risk areas are census tract level typologies that um, reflects displacement and gentrification risk using data on uh, housing market dynamics and population demographics. Uh, next slide, please. Objective 3.2 is to increase access to legal assistance for extremely low income, low income and moderate income tenants at risk of eviction or rent increase. Uh, metrics for this objective include funds allocated to legal assistance of extremely low to moderate income tenants. Um, also number and percent of tenants with legal representation um, by some of the same aforementioned categories uh, like affordability and income level, race, race, ethnicity and ancestry and disability status. Um, and also successful defense rate of tenants at risk of eviction or rent increases. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, objective 3.3 is to sustain home ownership rates for a range of tenure types, um, especially for existing BIPOC residents in displacement risk areas. Uh, metrics include funds allocated to foreclosure prevention, uh, number and percent of households receive support through foreclosure prevention programs by a range of categories, including race, ethnicity, and ancestry, households with children, tenure type, and so on. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Um, and then, of course, it would be necessary to track home ownership rates to assess whether programs that are aligned with this objective are producing successful, successful outcomes. Next slide, please. Objective 3.4 is to increase home ownership rates for a range of tenure types, especially for existing BIPOC residents and displacement risk areas. Uh, metrics include funds allocated to mortgage assistance for first time homeowners, uh, number and percent of households who go from tenant to homeowner, um, considering a range of characteristics. Next slide, please. Um, and then again, tracking home ownership rates through those same characteristics um, in order to determine successful outcomes. Next slide, please. And objective 3.5 is to invest in community protection and cultural preservation by subsidizing community specific housing opportunities and implementing housing policy that protects the cultural fabric of the region. Uh, metrics we're thinking of um, for this one include funds allocated to cultural prevention via housing protections, um, number or uh, possibly percent of communities protected by housing policy that centers cultural preservation. So this um, includes so far, but is not limited to Black and Indigenous people, unhoused people, transgender people, and artists. Um, and we're also, we'd also be interested in tracking culturally responsive entities um, uh, sustained in displacement risk areas. So for example, cultural arts institu institutions and community serving organizations. Next slide, please, and pass it to Sneed. Thank you, Joe. Um, so I, you are doing a great job of using the chat. We appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> we are gonna have a, more of a conversation about the specifics in the breakouts um, space, but because this is a lot of information, we wanted to just spend five or six minutes allowing you to write down any questions or thoughts that you have. Um, so um, here are the prompts, what would help you better understand the goals, objectives, and metrics, what concerns do you have? And then if there are specific areas where you have ideas about what works, what's missing, what you would change or remove, um, then jot those down as well. Um, so we'll come back at 11.35. Nicole's gonna play some music and then we'll put you into breakouts. All right, welcome back, everyone. Hope you had dynamic discussions. Um, our group did. And now this um, this time is uh, for um, questions that arose that kind of are cross cutting or you want to make sure get raised um, across the for, for the larger group. Um, 
just inviting the, the facilitators and, and the participants if you have a question you'd like to or a comment you'd like to raise in this space. And, and then we'll have some time with a Google form that we're going to be sharing with all of you, um, which will ask for written comments um, just as another way to get your, your input in any specific notes you want to make sure get captured. So, um, any cross-cutting questions or comments? Go ahead and um, raise your hand or drop them in the chat, either way. I do believe in awkward silences. So good with this. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say the facilitators are reporting back or, or is everyone supposed to chime? Everyone's welcome to. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> that was my I was question. That was my question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I mean I I loved the group I was in I love all of this um but we were just talking in terms of protections we were we were talking about like rental registries and and you know the way that like a regional entity like Bafa could play a role in um, creating standards that like cities throughout the bay should follow or could follow if they wanted to and providing resources to help um, build capacity to 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 figure out what best practices are, how do you implement it and whatnot. We're talking about information and outreach. Um, we were talking about the cultural preservation piece a little bit that we, that was in the chat earlier. Like, how do you measure that? Who tracks that? Is that part of protection? Um, we didn't necessarily find answers, but we <laughs> raised wonderful questions. So love with someone else in the group can can elaborate if they want. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah. And the, the question in our group came up too around kind of the scale of different solutions what makes sense to do at a city level or a county level or for BAFA to do as a regional um, program across across geographies anybody else from that group with Chris want to speak or or any other groups I 100 percent endorse what Chris said um, I'll just add that we also had kind of a discussion of like what best practices around data can be and you know what what is the purpose of that data in terms of shaping policy change and forming you know enforcement and all these kinds of things and also you know always being aware that it i in in my opinion data should lift up the, the voices of the people who are most impacted um and not silence or people over them Yeah, that's a great point. And that's always a, a tension in designing metrics and thinking about governance and accountability. Thank you for that. Um, I just noticed that I had forgotten to, well, I had, I had brought up um, incorporating LGBT um, community into a few of the metrics and um, even though it's it's an inclusive or allegedly an inclusive uh, abbreviation, um, I would like to just be able to incorporate more of like um, more in specific uh, identities within that. And one in particular that comes to mind uh, that I don't see many protections for is non-binary folk. And sometimes that gets clumped together with trans transgender, but it's not, not quite the same. So um, I would just really appreciate seeing that in there as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for naming that, Violet. Any other comments? Questions?
Okay, well, um, we're going to share a Google form in a minute for more input um, through written form. But we wanted to share the opportunities for public engagement. Um, could we pull up the slides? Thanks, Nicole. So on Monday, we'll be sending out links where you'll have a link to the presentation in slides, the recording of the event in the slides for each of the three listening sessions. So if you if you missed one um, and you want to view it and provide feedback on it, that would be great. You'll have that on Monday. Um, and then there's this um, Google form that we're sharing in the chat that um, you can use to provide comments on any of the, the three Ps. Um, it's the same form. And so if you fill it out once for protection and you want to fill it out again for preservation, you can do it that way. Or you can just put all your comments into one form, submit it. Um, and then there's an upcoming public meeting for BAFA on June 22nd. And there's a website for the information about that. You can also sign up for the BAFA mailing list. And there's a link for that. And then lastly, if you want to reach out to us about the social equity framework, um, you can email equ equitablehousing at berkeley.edu um, or also reach out to, to anybody on, on this facilitation team. Um, so those are the opportunities for engagement that we've identified. If there are others that you know about, um, community-based spaces or coalition spaces or, or public decision-making processes, feel free to share those in the chat um, so other people can, can have that information. Next slide, please. So we're gonna go ahead and, sh I, oh, it's been shared. So you have now in the chat, the link to the, to the Google form. Um, and so we're just gonna take the last 10 or so minutes um, to give you time to respond to those questions in the Google form. And, and then we'll come back together and, and close the, the main part and transition to this optional last half hour where we can dig into any of the topics that folks have, have lifted up or, or other topics that you wanna just get into in more depth. Um, and some of these in the chat are definitely what we could talk about in that last half hour. Okay, I so appreciate all of the notes in the chat, which are great. Um, for those of you who don't want to stay and dig in deeper, um, I just want to thank you for taking time on a Friday afternoon and providing all of this thoughtful input. Um, and I hope that you continue to engage in all of the ways that Eli mentioned. Um, and have a great afternoon. Um, and for those of you who wanna stay, what are we thinking? Uh, have two topics that we've gleaned from the conversation we just had. Um, <clears throat> are there other, anything missing that people really want to spend some time on? Okay. Um, sorry, I don't I don't know if this is something that everyone wants to talk about, but I was noting from the discussion in the chat and something that I've seen working for a legal services organization is just how how difficult it is to access legal services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Given the scarcity. Yeah, and that we had a conversation about that too, and just even like um, where tenants even have the right is there someone available um 
I see that as connected or as something that definitely could come up in the enforcement conversation, um, which would be one of the topics. Um, and I, I see a lot in the thread about the complexity of enforcement and, and who the onus is on. Um, are there any other things or is, you know, and, and obviously if you go into one of these conversations, you can say what you want to say. <laughs> This would just be the guiding themes. Sorry, I, I have something more abstract, and I, I promise this is my last bigger suggestion. Um, but kind of that that question of how can data um, be used in a way that doesn't just reinforce the status quo? Um, mm -hmm. so kind of a radical or decolonizing way mm -hmm. in this context. Okay. I, like Eli, I'm also a big fan of awkward silence. Um, but I think, I think this is probably enough to start. We'll create two breakout groups, see where fo folks want to go and um, come back a few minutes before uh, one. And, um, just feel free to navigate to whichever breakout group is interesting to you. So you might have to scroll down to the bottom of that window that just popped up and then you'll see landlord engagement enforcement and you click on join if you want that group or cultural preservation and click on join if you want to go to that group. Thank you, Eli. Hello, welcome back. I think we've <clears throat> lost a lot of folks um, and I don't want to put you on the spot, Catherine, although I'm very glad that you're here and stuck with us. <laughs> um, oh, there's a couple more folks coming in. Um, any last things that folks want to share before we wrap up for the day? I'm guessing the landlord conversation was rich because you all were slow to come back. <laughs> I think we were just digging into something really important, which I have so many feelings on. Not sure about thoughts, but feelings for sure. Share your feelings, Katie. Well, we were just talking about um, what should the role of landlord education, outreach support be in protection and, you know, our... Um, Marissa was asking, like, are we, you know, trying to get to a world where more people are landlords um, and supporting landlord, landlords and landlordship in that way? And I feel very strongly, no, we should decommodify housing. I mean, I understand that in the world we live in, it's an important wealth building strategy. Um, but I, I just, it's an exploitative relationship that I think, you know, that is always going to have problems and kind of like, Ignoring that is going to reproduce those problems. Um, so I, I, yeah, I mean, I think, and landlords all, already have a lot of political power. They may say they don't because tenant power is also strong in this area. But you know, if you look at who is funding, um, who is you know contributing to politicians, and you know what the kind of common sense is, I think they have plenty of power. And I'll stop because I could just go on. Well, I just want to add briefly that I've been on the board of a emerging community land trust for a long time. And these are conversations that happen or should be happening with community land trusts because once money and property and shall we say control and power start happening. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to make sure that it doesn't devolve into what Katie's talking about, which we know it all, it does. This has been the problem with nonprofit developers. They're in the business. They're professionals. They get their living from, you know, keeping it all going. 
And, but even land trusts, the ones that aren't struggling with this are, are not being honest with themselves. Let me put it that way. Because it is a great idea, decommodifying housing, but um, at the, getting people to democratically um, operate their housing is really hard. Just think about all your co-tenants, people you've lived with. Somebody always sort of takes over and not, maybe not completely, but they always rise to the top. That's why regulation and oversight are important because those are the people who are not supposed to have any money in the game or, or any career in the game. I can stop now, but I agree. It would be great, but it requires a lot of spiritual education, if you will. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Jenny. I think um, <clears throat> this is like one of the big tensions and, and particularly in thinking about metrics, it's like, uh, how prescriptive do you want to be? Um, and then is that going to cover all the things that we're afraid could happen? Um, so I encourage you all to continue to share thoughts that you have. Um, in various formats. Um, there are definitely tensions here that are not going to be completely resolved in the language of objectives and metrics, but it's really important for um, folks to continue to think about them and, and, and find ways to think about better accountability. Um, and like the interim and long term, like Katie, your vision is maybe not where we're going to be in three years, but if that is the vision that we really want to move towards, starting to think about that. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for coming and um, happy Friday. Stay hydrated. <laughs> and I hope we get to interact with you in other formats soon. <laughs>